reality. Uh, I'm uh, Dumitrel Login. I'm a research fellow now uh, <laughs> in School of Computing at NUS, uh, National University of Singapore. Uh, previously, I was doing my PhD there, and uh, my focus was on uh, the performance of computer systems. Uh, however, today I'm going to talk about something completely different, not, not about my research, but about my uh, hobbies and what I'm doing uh, in my uh, spare time. Um, so let's see if the... Okay, so this is the video. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, this is the, the first part of my presentation is about the lazy switch. Um, and the motivation behind it is that uh, I am very lazy. My wife is also very lazy. <laughs> so for example, if we are watching TV or uh, we are uh, ready to sleep, it's very hard to go to the uh, switch and turn off the light. So we wanted to have something like uh, maybe use our handphone, which is uh, closer to us, or just uh, uh, say something to a personal assistant to turn off the light. Um, and um, of course, it's uh, another motivation that it, it's a fancy thing to do this. And uh, I can tell you that all your friends will be impressed uh, when you have this thing at home. And it's fun uh, for uh, uh, people working in uh, computer science or uh, electronics. It's fun tinkering with uh, IoT devices, uh, configuring software, and also doing some coding. So uh, this is actually the architecture of uh, my smart home. And uh, maybe it looks a bit complicated, but I'll try to explain. Uh, at the edge of it, there are these smart switches that are able to control uh, lights uh, or other ele uh, electric and electronic devices. Um, and also integrate sensors. And in this, in my case, uh, I design a device called the lazy switch, and I'm going to give you some details later. Of course, you need to interact with this, and um, for, for this you can use uh, the personal assistants, such as uh, Amazon Alexa running on a Echo or a Echo Dot, Google Assistant, or the open source Microsoft uh, AI and uh, the Mark uh, <coughs> system there. And glue them together. You have to glue them together, and you need like a controller uh, to to connect all these devices. And um, of course, uh, now many of our uh, homes have uh, cameras around, so. Uh, in the second part of my presentation, I'm going to talk about a project uh, on how to use these uh, cameras to, to make the, smart, uh, the house smarter. But uh, let's take them uh, one by one and start with the lazy switch. Basically, uh, the lazy, I developed this uh, the lazy switch because I was not very happy with the commercially available uh, smart plugs out there. Um, in my opinion, they have a big issue. They, uh, one smart plug can control a single device. They, they only offer you a single plug. And um, this is a waste uh, of uh, Wi-Fi connection or Bluetooth connection and also a waste of space. So, uh, and of course, they are also not really uh, open source. I mean, you, you, you could hack them, but it's better if you can do your own. Uh, so that's why I designed this lazy switch, which is actually a um, device that can control multiple uh, plugs, switches, and can also integrate sensors, uh, as you can, uh, no, sorry. you can see in the diagram there. So at the heart of it is basically a microcontroller. Uh, it has a wireless connection, uh, like a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. And it can control multiple switches, uh, which are like re relays uh, uh, components, and also integrate uh, multiple sensors. And actually, a single lazy switch can cover the entire house, if the house is designed in such a way 
uh, that all the wires come together into a single control panel. Uh, however, in my case, I was not so lucky, so I had to hack all the plugs. Uh, and you can see here that uh, I put a lazy switch for this plug here, and also added some switches for the light. So in, in this case here, I have the microcontroller inside, and I can control five uh, relays. I have a Bluetooth uh, connection to the server, and I also have a temperature sensor. And there I have another three uh, switches that are controlling the lights, and they are linked to this one here. So, however, I have to warn you, uh, <laughs> don't try this uh, at home, because actually you are, uh, you are uh, handling like uh, mains uh, voltage, which, which can be uh, fatal. So. Uh, maybe first just try with a uh, lower voltage, like 5 volts, 12 volts, uh, something like that. <laughs> um, okay, so this is the lazy switch. Now, let's go to the, the server system. For this, I, I uh, just used the open source uh, project called Home Assistant. Um, it's available on GitHub and it's uh, coded mostly in Python. So, but I had to, because I, uh, I have this uh, lazy switch, I had to integrate it with the home assistant. And it's actually quite easy. Uh, you can do it in like one day or, s or something like that. Uh, the beauty of uh, this home assistant is that it already comes with uh, support for many, many other devices, like the, the Edimax uh, smart plug, TP-Link, um, uh, smart TVs and so on. And uh, the, uh, there is a quite active community around it, so uh, yeah. It also comes with a web interface from which you can control your, uh, your devices. Um, maybe at the end I'll show you my interface back home. Uh, okay. Of course, this server has to, th this server system uh, has to run on, on some platform. And actually, it can run on a Raspberry Pi, for example, which is uh, low cost and also uses uh, very, very low power. So you can add this to, to your house and actually uh, it, it won't use so much uh, energy. In my case, actually, I, I didn't use a Raspberry Pi. I'm using an NVIDIA Jetson board, which is a more powerful uh, development kit that has also a GPU. Um, and I'll show you why I, I use that later. OK. Uh, next is the personal assistant part to control uh, this smart home using voice. So there are a few choices out there, um, like proprietary uh, software and uh, hardware, like Google Home Mini with Google Assistant, uh, Amazon Echo Dot. Uh, but there is also this uh, Microsoft AI open source project. However, I, I have to admit that uh, I tried it on my laptop, but I didn't uh, really configure it to, to connect with my smart house. This is a, this is a work in progress. Uh, yeah. However, uh, I think it's, it's a very interesting uh, uh, project. It's also written in Python, available on, on GitHub. One part of it, I think it's uh, written in C, C++, is the, uh, is the text-to-speech part. Yeah. OK, now in the second part, uh, I told you that I'm going to talk about how to integrate the cameras around the house uh, and make the house more intelligent. So uh, it started one morning where I didn't know where uh, my wife was, and I was uh, very lazy to uh, get out of the bed. So I, I was wondering, is there a way to ask the personal assistant where is she or who is at home? Uh, okay, in my test, I'm going to use this uh, Jon Snow. Uh, I, I tried it with my name on Google Home Mini, but uh, apparently uh, it cannot recognize my name. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's why I had to change it to some, something. Uh, yeah, actually, there is a typo there. It should be without H. Yeah, so, um, and to link it with the previous presentation, uh, you saw something about Dialogflow. So to implement this, actually, I, I used the Dialogflow uh, 
to uh, interpret the sentences on Google Cloud. Yeah. Another use case is to, maybe there are some sensitive uh, commands, so uh, you need to be authenticated. Um, uh, what we have seen uh, uh, with uh, Google Home Mini and Amazon Echo Dot is that uh, it can take commands from uh, different users and it doesn't really know from whom uh, it took the command. Actually, uh, I think they, lately they have implemented some kind of uh, um, part where they can distinguish the voice. But uh, in my case, I was thinking, what if I can do it with a camera? So the smart assistant has the camera, takes your photo, uh, recognizes your face, and then it can allow or deny your uh, command. And the third part is apparently not connected to, to the others, but uh, in order to, to implement the previous two uh, parts, you need to tell the system that, oh, this is my face, this is another uh, family mem member's face. So you, ne you need to tell him which are the user's faces. And uh, currently we have lots of photos, right? So what if we have a smart photo gallery that is where you are able to, to label your, your faces and also link it with the uh, authentication and user uh, tracking part. And um, now there are, of course, there, there are uh, Google Photos and uh, other solutions that are using cloud. But uh, like with the latest Facebook uh, scandal, right? I'm, we don't want to put our <laughs> photos anymore on the cloud. And maybe we want to keep them inside our house and um, keep them at the edge. So th there is this new paradigm. It's called edge computing, where everything is uh, done at the edge of the network, in, in this case, uh, in the house, rather than going to the cloud. So uh, this will be like a third use case where this software is able to uh, recognize faces, objects, uh, and organize your photos, and also connect to, to the other two. So uh, I started this, uh, this project, co a project called uh, Faceful, a uh, smart photo gallery at the edge, uh, which has like two main modules, the smart gallery and the smart face integration, which is able to run entirely at the edge inside your house. So actually I put it on, on GitHub um, at, and it's written uh, mostly on Python. Its architecture is uh, uh, modular. I split it in, in two parts, a uh, web server and an image processing server uh, connected through sockets. Basically these two components can run on the same machine or they, they can run on two different Machines. In my case, I tested it with two Jetson boards, but you can also run it on a single uh, uh, board. Uh, when I split this in two, I had in mind something like, what if the web server is running on a small Raspberry Pi, which is not so powerful uh, in doing image processing, while the image processing part is running maybe on a more powerful like uh, uh, platform like Jetson or um, PC with GPU. Um, and the, the image processing part is uh, based on uh, FaceNet project and also on TensorFlow uh, models. And you can see here uh, Faceful in action for <laughs> with Jon Snow, right? Uh, it can recognize uh, his face and here actually you can uh, see the, the box number one you can actually enter a label and update the database with this label. Then, for example, you have 10 photos of you. You can uh, label them with your name. After that, you can run a training phase where the system will uh, be trained to recognize your face. And then in all the other photos, uh, it can recognize your face. And then you can do the, the, the face for you.
and the second uh, ah, okay it's okay, just the last the last uh, slide this one Okay, and um, yeah, th that's it. Thank you. <laughs> and Thank you so much. Quick question from my side. How many, yeah. how many cameras do you have in your... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, actually I tested with only two or three. Uh, yeah, one, one in the kitchen and two in the living room, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you did all the 